But yeah, we went to a Dawsonville and you know had some success. You know, a couple races we had like World Six Hundred, and a couple races we you know really had the best car and was going to win, and something would break. Michigan, I think we broke a fit and with the oil pump, and you know Charlotte, we broke a just a bolt holding a caliper on, which was yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Then we had another broke uh, something, I forget which race. We should have won about four or five races a year. We ended up winning Dover. Then, you know, tragedy hit there at Atlanta, you know, with Mike. And that was, um, that was, that was a hard thing. That was something that, I'll be honest with Rick. It's like I'd signed. I didn't want to leave Dawsonville, but we we needed to. Where we made a mistake, we should have lived on down in Cummings, and I shouldn't really, because the uh, Dawson school, great school, great teachers and stuff. But our girls just never felt like they thought they was a little bit behind from when we left Hickory, right? So we made a decision we was going to uh, move back, you know, and I was okay with it. I mean, in some ways, because Junior is, is going to start that deal with Sterling. And, uh, Sue, Thanksgiving. No, works for a weekend. Uh, I went over to Junior's, and we sit down and talk for quite a while, a couple of hours after practice, you know. And um, so, anyway, he really wanted me to come do Sterling's deal. And I said, well, let me think about it. Didn't. I said, you know, I think I'm going to do it because this uh, give me the opportunity to move back to Hickory or girls and be my Nancy's parents lived there. My mom and dad still, you know, still lived there. So that's what we did, moved back. Um, but anyway, Mike, when he got, you know, killed there in Atlanta, that was the race. I mean, we had that thing, you know, or we'd ran well all day. I thought we, were, we was going to just last stop and – you know, um, now were you changing tires at the time? No, you were, Dan, were you going over the wall? No, okay, all right. No, Mike was changing right rear. You know, Tommy, Cole, Jack, Dan was changing the front, and Clinton, he was carrying, and uh, Mike Brandt gassed. And so, you know, was getting ready to pick because he didn't have pit boxes and walked down through here. Like, it's, it's gonna be the last stop, right? You know, it's his last caution. And hey, yeah, uh, let's just get him to that ball ball, all right? Give him the speech, and you know, Reese, don't worry about it, boss. I got this, and you know, then it's like I turned around, and all of a sudden, all oh, hell broke loose, right? And so I run across, you know, on the other side of the car, and there was Mike, and you know, help me, boss, help me, you know, and you know, this he passed away later that night. That was. You know, that's something – that's tough. So <clears throat> we knew we needed to do something. I didn't know what to do. And we had – went to Mike's funeral, and the next day – I mean, Bill knew about the deal with Junior. I didn't know what to do. I hated to leave Bill over that. You know, but just to – it haunted me so much. Just it hurt because uh, Rich and I have become a pretty good friends. And anyway, I said, you know, emotionally I needed to stay, but you know, I felt for my family. We needed to go, right? Yes, so that's kind of what we did. Yeah. And um, you know, it's whether it's the right thing to do. I don't know. I mean, you know, just. Uh, but I did. We did it. So I went to went to work for Junior. Let know. me ask you this question: People remember the name Mike Rich, mm-hmm. but they don't remember the person. Yeah. Who who was he? He was. Uh, uh, so Rich, he would come to pit practice in his cowboy boots, right? <laughs> oh, you know, he is so athletic, and oh yeah, he would. But he worked hard at you know he had an air bottle and a gun and even had a, a car old Thunderbird race car up there in his basement. He lived around in Blairsville, you know he was a run heavy equipment, just you know just 
you know, I can still see Mark just always small, just, you know, he, you know, just a good guy. And Teresa, his wife, you know, she's a sweet soul. And, you know, so he was just a, he's a guy that everybody liked, right? He yeah. was that guy. Yeah. But very athletic. Uh, you know, we'd won. It's so hard because we'd won the Rockingham pit crew yeah. deal a week or two before that. Then yeah. on Saturday night before the Atlanta race, uh, Harry Mellon and, you know, them had a get-together for us there in Atlanta at a hotel. You know, everybody stayed. Really? And, yeah. and we'd had a really good time, right? And you just think about, you know, 24 hours later, you know, everything was just so yeah. turned upside down, right? So, Rich, he was, you know, he would just take a bullet for you. He's a guy that you'd want to go to battle with. And, you know, he, you know, he, he just a um, person that, just a good guy. But, gosh, he was a hard worker, hard worker. He worked, he earned that spot on that pit crew. And, you know, he, his hand and eye stuff, is he was just amazing. But he just, he was just a natural athlete, you know, wrestler. I think because he just built that way, but um, so that one hurt. It still hurts. I mean, after all these years, it still hurts. I think about Mike all the time. You know, just uh, and we never were. It took me. I mean, I'm be honest with you. You know, and Junior and I talked about this. You know, I struggled for a couple of years. Yeah, you know, what fair is Sterling? I mean, I struggled. Did you really? I did. Oh yeah. I mean, because you struggle getting that close to people because. You know, Nancy and I have come good friends with him and Teresa and, you know, just, um, so yeah, I struggled for a long time with that, you know, cause, you know, just to be, to see it and just, you know, and I remember I changed hard for a long time, you know, changed rear cause I was left handed and, you know, back in, you didn't have extra people. So... I said, well, I'll see. I'll change. I'll try it. Yeah, and I did it one time in the 500 with Sterling, their first race. And I never heard the cars before, but I heard them that day. You know, like wow. you, you just, you tone it out, right? So but, you changed rear tires at Daytona yeah. the following February. Yeah. And wow. I never did it again. Wow. Yeah, I just never I don't know. I mean, just, just no. I just couldn't do it again. Yeah, because you never heard, you never heard the cars before Zoom and Pass. Because you remember back in there wasn't no pit road speed. Yeah, yeah. You, know, uh, they talked about. It. I don't know if we had it then. That's trying to do something, but still, you just never heard cars. But this time, you know, you, you know, if, you know, if somebody's pitting behind you. And they, you know, they slam on the brakes and squeal the tires, you know, you just, you know, yeah. you, you're, you always just watching and just, yeah, you know, I said, I can't do it. I never did it again. I, I, I hate to go from that to uh, early in 91, you go to Bristol with Sterling. Yeah. And, and he gets in a pretty serious wreck and fire at Bristol. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about that? You know, I remember, so we we kind of figure out that the tailpipe had broke, a piece of the tailpipe had broke off, you know, and, and it, it cut down the left rear. But before that, he'd gotten a wreck and backed in the wall. And so we were, and you know, uh, it, to the, today, it still haunts me the way that all come about because, like, it's just stupid on my part. But, you know, at the, the heat of the moment, you do anything to finish, right? You know, so we took out jack stand. And I don't know. I mean, I'll take the blame for it because I was a crew chief, which I probably did. It. I'm not going to, you know. And we took out bungee cord and, you know, Tied the dick lid up and got it, you know, and taped it up, deal with deal. Then, but that tailpipe broke, and I doubt it when that thing broke, it backed in the wall. I think the jack stand broke the neck off for the fuel cell. That thing caught on fire. 
and you know. Now, did you have it in there to keep the decal it up? Okay, yeah, yeah, just trying to get it up, and because I remember t- we took and took a bungee cord and wrapped it over the decal and hooked it to the bumper, right? Yeah, and raced the back of the car up the jack screws to get it up off the ground, or took a jack, I forget, you know, Rick, but. It was hard. That was tough. That was just that was a stupid deal. I shouldn't have that was stupid on my part. And, you know, that was that was just wrong. Yeah. Like it was just huge mistake. And you know, I was crew chief. I took the blame for that. And you know, I, I that was tough because poor Sterling, he didn't deserve that. Ster, you know, Sterling deserved a lot better <laughs> than what yeah, I yeah, gave him yeah. there at Juniors. You know, yeah. I was so happy that he got with Glover and Larry and Am that he kid finally won 10 races, Darlington. I mean, we sit on yeah. the pole at Darlington. We'd, I, mean, I don't know how many times we run second, right? But, you know, yeah. it's uh, you know, it's a deal where um, I don't – I honestly don't believe I gave Sterling a fair shake because I was just not doing what I tried. But, you know, I still in that funk about Mike and, you know, just you just didn't – you know, you didn't get help. You didn't know yeah. what to do, right? Yeah. You just deal with it yourself and yeah. – yeah, but Sterling getting burned up, that was that that one right there still haunts. I got pictures I still got pictures of that car in my toolbox at home. Do you really? Oh yeah. Like I'll keep them just I don't know why I do. They're still in my toolbox in my house. Just yeah. You know, in ever you know, we took lots back to Wilkesboro, Junior wanted him to drive a car, I didn't care. You know what I'm saying? Sterling come here and start a car and when I saw Sterling, you know, it it was upsetting because, you know, I said, man, look what I've done to that guy, you know, seriously. So it was hard. It was hard. And I met it. I mean, because I was a crew chief, so I should take the blame for it, right? Yeah. Because everybody did what I told them. You know, yeah. so, <clears throat> you know, Sterling and I, we talked about it, though. You know, you know and um, just uh, thank God he's just a good soul. Yeah. I love Sterling. Yeah. You know, I'm a huge fan. I was so happy when he – started having success because i knew how much he he deserved it he's such a good race car driver right yeah. he, like i said he deserved a lot better than what i gave him Mary juniors he really did 